Well, good afternoon and welcome to the LBJ Grasslands outside of Decatur, Texas. Tonight's exercise is part two of the field testing of the Phoenix LR60R. I did have several requests to provide a side-by-side -side view with the LR40R V2, which is on the left. So there you have it. Well, what are we going to be doing tonight? I'm out here at a campground. I'm going to run a, a very simple scenario, not as detailed as some of the ones I've done in the past, but I'm going to try to stay roughly in scenario for the entirety of the exercise. So let's say we had a three-person family, two adults, a small child, Boy Scout, we'll call him Andrew. That's just the first name that came to mind. So Andrew was out here playing. The parents got involved in a very intense, shall we say, conversation. Lost track of time. They looked up. Andrew is nowhere to be found. Uh, they called out his name. Searched roughly this very close perimeter, periphery of the campground. Panicked. Went up and down the road calling his name. No luck. There are a lot of people out here camping uh, today. None of them have seen a small child. So let's say for purposes of this scenario, I was out here getting prepped to do a night navigation exercise. The parents stopped me, asked me if I'd seen the kid. No, now I'm involved in the search. So I have to start from first principles. Last known good location, roughly in this area. This campground though, look at all of this. If I'm a kid, I've got a hundred areas that I want to go exploring and playing. I'm not even a kid and I want to go down there and explore right now. So I've got the LR60R on me. I'm going to use it as if this is a real scenario. I'm not trying to show or promote any particular mode or output level. It's just a tool in my kit. I'm going to use that tool for a much larger periphery search of this area, and then I'll go up and down the road myself, out over Cottonwood Lake, and then uh, we'll just see how it goes. I hope this will be of interest to others involved in search and rescue, uh, park rangers, law enforcement who have to cover uh, significant rural areas, and uh, we'll just see how it goes tonight. For purposes of this scenario, let's presume that Andrew was noticed missing about 30 minutes ago. I've been involved in the search for less than 10 minutes. The parents stopped me out on the road asked if I had seen the child. No, I had not. I agreed to help search. We've contacted Wise County Law Enforcement. They are en route. They will take over searching up and down the road, interviewing campers, IDing vehicles, and they will serve as incident command. My initial responsibility will be a relatively close to intermediate distance search around the campground, roughly a 50-yard radius. Now, as part of the SMEAC process, situation, mission, execution, admin, communications, I have to start the thought experiment of why might the child be missing. The top three things on my worry list or mechanical injury, particularly a head injury, snake bite. It is that time of year. They're just starting to come out. They're hungry. They're mean. In this environment, uh, the number one that I'm worried about is timber rattler. And then the third situation is a possible abduction. Now, as far as being close to the campground, the two scenarios that are the highest probability are mechanical injury and snake bites. So I'm going to go get started. You notice there is still some light on the horizon. Uh, 
I have to work in all conditions. Lights have to work in all conditions. It's not always going to be perfectly dark outside. I'm also using my normal search and rescue helmet, which is the Phoenix HP 30R V2. There is the LR60R set up on the tripod. I'm going to be working in this configuration tonight. I can collapse the tripod, use it as a free handheld light, or expand the tripod up and out and work hands-free. So I'm going to get started over in this area. And basically, if you're in law enforcement and you know what pie the corner means, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to work myself in this type of a pattern and show you exactly how I would use these lights if this were, in fact, a realistic situation. I'm working with my headlamp and the searchlight in tandem. If I were a kid, where would I go? play and explore. This is probably the first area right here and I'm using Eco Spot just to get some visibility back behind those trees. Now I would have to go into and beyond that tree line but before I do that I'm going to make my way up this path and then search back off in that area and then come back around here. Let me show you that. Now I'm up into low spot. Again, very slowly and carefully look back into the tree line, see if there's anything. Now I have the LR60R in 2000 lumen flood illuminating a fairly wide area. I'm going to work hands-free. I've got my headlamp off now, so what I'm going to do is put it in a low spot and work off to one side of my primary light. So this is giving me a capability that I don't normally have. I can continue to get that additional illumination and then go down and search very carefully in that area. This is a similar situation, but the light rolls are reversed. The LR60R is in 1000 lumen spot, and then I've got my headlamp on in flood. So I'm going to work off to the side here, bump my headlamp up. then walk back and look back this way and then work my way back to the light and then just keep pieing around. A much more wide open area, so I have the LR60R in 6000 lumen flood. My headlamp is currently off, so let me move to the side. Again, I, I typically work the headlamp in opposition to the primary light. So let's put this on in spot. And as I move out through here, often I can pick up unusual shadowing that may indicate that someone came through here or there's even a depression out there that I might not notice as quickly otherwise. 
And so I'd be working kind of this section here, then I'm going to do the exact same thing out here, and then one final time back out to the road. So that's how this would work. And this is giving me uh, a lot more information than I would have with, uh, let's say, a headlamp and a free lamp. And everything is always in, in the same direction. Now I can work two beams against one another at different angles. Okay, let's say I finished up the campground search. What I'm doing now is I've collapse the tripod, I'm on a trail that leads behind the campground area. I've got the LR60R on Eco Spot. I don't have my normal tracking light with me because I just planned on being out here for a simple land nav exercise. So let's say that's a mistake on my part. Can I use this Eco spot in its place. And really all I'm trying to do is keep this light down low, especially at the edges of the trail. What I'm looking for is heel digs, drag marks. This ground is not that soft, so you could only pick up partial footprints, but if there was an abduction and it happened close to the campground, it means that Andrew went out here exploring, and uh, this path will eventually take me to a fork, and I've got three ways to go. Uh, one is back up to the road towards Tadra. The other is back up the road closer to another campground, and then you can uh, go off and take a shortcut to the Red Trail. So all I'm looking for here is are there any signs of drag marks where perhaps uh, Andrew was out here, ran into the wrong person at the wrong time, and is there any sign of a struggle and uh, the child being drug off? So actually this, this eco mode is working uh, pretty decent. I finished the search around the campground, then got a call from Wise County Law Enforcement. Uh, since I got the big light, they want me to go out and search around Cottonwood Lake. Well, here I am at uh, the fence. So I'm going to start out in 1,000 lumen spot and then just work my way from the edge of the lake back around to that tree line especially in poor conditions high candela can be the most powerful tool in your lighting arsenal now I'm up by the road and I'm looking at uh, a section through a couple of trees, but across the lake, uh, I'm over 700 yards and even with the unaided eye, I can get a view of the opposite shore in high spot. Uh, with a magnified optic, I could actually make uh, a PID of something suitably reflective at that distance and I know you want to see it so let's see if I can get this there we go that is the full 21,000 I'm in my vehicle now I uh, just got a call I'm supposed to proceed south towards Jeep Hill. They may have something. I'm on my way. So here we are at the top of Jeep Hill at Max Flood, and this is where we found Andrew. Let me get my headlamp on. He actually came south 
down the road this way, discovered Jeep Hill, climbed up, headlamp back off. He was out here playing king of the hill, but it got really dark. Decided he wanted to go home, but he got disoriented. So he went down the wrong way, tripped over something, and rolled down the hill. He hit a pretty big rock. That kept him from falling, or rolling all the way down the hill. However, his arm and leg are bruised up pretty bad. Doesn't seem to be anything broken and no head injuries. A Wise County Sheriff was driving by, thought he heard uh, just a faint scream, uh, came up to the top, eventually found him. He's still with the boy. Fire and Rescue is on site. They're getting set up. I'm just providing area illumination until they get completely set up. They'll, of course, put him in a field stretcher, very controlled environment, and then uh, get him into the hospital. So another scenario ends at least with a somewhat happy ending. Um, I hope you saw some really good use of the light tonight. Speaking of that, let me give you one more interesting shot before we shut it down for tonight. All right, here we are. Actually looking back towards the Tadra campground, another peak in 21,000 lumens. So I hope you got some interesting information tonight, particularly if you're in search and rescue or law enforcement. If you'd like to see additional tests, please let me know. And as always, until the next review, thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching the video.